uh, minimalism is gonna hit full force again. A lot of baby wearing, a lot of mini napping, and a lot of adult diapers. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Maggie Rose. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm answering your questions from the comments of one of my last videos announcing our pregnancy. And a lot of you asked some pretty good questions. So those are what we're gonna be going over today. There's a mixture of faith, pregnancy, minimalism. There's a little bit of everything today. Question number one is how have you been emotionally? I'm assuming that's since my last video on postpartum depression um, and I've been feeling really good. I was wondering how that would go with pregnancy hormones and emotions and this past week the kids are starting to like get aggressive with one another when they're playing instead of just getting annoyed they're starting to get aggressive now so it's like a new phase in their relationship that I'm trying to deal with but other than that I've been really good. Next question is what is the age gap between all of your kids? Aria and Malachi are 19 months apart. The age gap between Malachi and this new baby will be like what 26? months something it's like a little over two years it'll be a bigger age gap which i'm not really sure what to expect um next question is how did you stay on track with your devotions and continue praising the lord in the midst of the bad morning sickness and let me tell you it was really bad morning sickness i will have a first trimester recap video but yes that was very difficult because i mean i was sick with aria's pregnancy but it was easier i guess in a way because i didn't have any kids to take care of during the day i was working but it was easier at night like i didn't have to worry about putting the kids to bed or helping them or anything but that it's been really difficult but the thing that's helped me do my devotions is hunter and i are going through a reading plan to read through the bible in six months and knowing that i have to keep on top of that or it will fall apart i have to read the bible every single morning so I have to do that. And sometimes it is more of like, oh, I have to get this done and not so much like, oh, I'm ready to dive into God's word today, but I'm still doing it, which is the important thing. And sometimes it's really interesting and I'm really excited to pick up my Bible from where I left off and learn more things. And other times when I'm in the middle of like, oh, this is the genealogy of so-and-so, this son, this son, this son, then it gets really boring. But I am glad that I'm doing that. And praising God in the midst of bad morning sickness, that, was hard, but it was easier almost with the third kid because I have my other two children to look at and know what a blessing it is to be pregnant. That was easier just looking at them and being like, this is what the result will be at the end of this pregnancy, God willing, and it will be worth it no matter what. I would try to praise him, but at the same time, I was like, this is amazing but it does suck at the same time. Like first trimester is not fun. So that was difficult, but it was easier being able to look at my children and see what a blessing it is to have kids. Next question, what is your plan for making room for the baby in your house? Are Arya and Malachi going to share a room? <laughs> I just inhaled a gnat, ew. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Aria Malachi, yes, they will be sharing a room. We just got Aria a bunk bed. Someone from Facebook Marketplace sold it to us for $100. So they're very excited to be able to share a room soon. We haven't transitioned them into sharing a room yet. We're going to start with having them sleep together for nap time soon um, and then transition into nighttime. But we're working on having the kids wake up at a decent time first because Malachi still wakes up at like 5 15 every morning and aria wakes up around six sometimes a little earlier but i want them to try to wake up around the same time so that they're not disrupting each other's sleep whenever they need to wake up for the morning so we're still working on a few uh, kinks with that but the baby will be in our room for the first couple of weeks and then transition into the um third bedroom upstairs that we have malachi's crib in right now so that's the plan i don't like sleeping with my newborns too long malachi i think aria went over to her own room at five weeks and malachi was maybe like eight weeks or something but i just get better sleep and my babies get better sleep if they're not with me all throughout the night it's just helps both of us sleep better um next question what tips do you have for intentionally pointing your children towards god even at a young age uh that's a heavy question because i don't 
know it all yet <laughs> and I never will know it all but I'm still going through the hard stage of motherhood with the young kids so I don't know all the answers but I have found that it does make a difference if I know that I acted irrationally upset or irrationally angry about something especially with Aria because she understands more if I go back to her and apologize for it she really gets it and I notice that she does that later too. If she knows that she's been disrespectful to me without me prompting her to do so, she'll come up to me at a later time during the day and be like, hey mommy, when I said that, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done that. So I think she's, I think she's getting it from when I do it with her and I'm not good at that. Like I've only done that a couple times and it's just hard to admit that you're wrong about something or that you acted wrongly, I guess. So I need to do that more but I want to do that more because I noticed that it gives good results when it happens. Also something that my mentor told me to do, which I haven't done yet because I just can't get myself to do it yet. But if I am in a bad mood and Ari is in a bad mood, she said that if you guys are both in a bad mood or you know that you are having a bad attitude about something, just pull out your Bible and start reading a couple Bible verses about the thing that you're struggling with with your child so if they're struggling with anger and you're also struggling with anger just sit down pray about it right then and there and look up a bible verse about it i still have yet to do this because it's really hard for me in the moment to stop and do that but that's something that i'm looking forward to trying but yeah obviously i don't know everything i'm still trying to learn but those are a few things that i either have tried a couple times or i want to start implementing and other things like just teaching Bible verses and having them watch biblical cartoons. I try to incorporate more biblical cartoons instead of like Disney all the time. So one of our favorites is Bible Adventures from YouTube. The kids love that. So that's like one of the biggest ones. But just little things like that help too. Just like little kid praise and worship songs and little kid car biblical cartoons and stuff. Next question. Oh, pregnancy cravings. Pretty much whatever anybody that I'm watching on TV is eating, I will crave that. Didn't really have any cravings in the first trimester because I was just trying to avoid every sort of food ever. That I hated food, hated food, hated every single piece of food. But yeah, sweets are always my go-to, always love sweets. But I haven't really had any like, ooh, pregnancy cravings. Unless again, I see somebody on TV eating pizza and then I'm like, Hunter, we need to have pizza tonight or I'm gonna go crazy, but. <laughs> Other than that, not really. Next question is about my birth plan. Is it a home birth, hospital, birth center? I'm actually going to be planning a birth center birth this time, unless I would possibly be going into labor at like 35 weeks or before, then they won't accept you into the birth center. Um, then I would be going to a hospital. But my plan is birth center because I like the idea of a home birth. I'm just still a little bit unsure about it. I wouldn't feel as comfortable as I would at a birth center. Um, I just love the approach that they take to birth. And because I've had a natural birth with Malachi and really not enjoyed the experience, but after the fact enjoyed the experience, but during not so much, but I loved my postpartum experience so much better with Malachi than I did with Aria and I was induced and had an epidural with Aria's labor and this one and Malachi's I wasn't induced I didn't have any sort of um, medical interventions or anything and that birth just went so much more smooth than Aria's did and it was like three hours long or something so yeah I'm interested to see how this birth will be. I'm pretty excited about it actually. They have like a big giant birthing tub and you're not allowed to do that at the hospital. So I'm pretty excited to try that out. Might hate it, but I might love it. So we'll see. Oh, the next question goes right along with that. Expectations for how you think the birth and postpartum will go based on my past two experiences. I feel like I am expecting it to go well but I know that there's so many things that could go wrong or just more complicated than what I'm thinking in my head. Like there might be something that happens and I might have to be rushed to the hospital from the birth center and I'm trying to prepare myself for those situations, but I'm also trying to remain positive and not freak myself out about stuff. I'm hoping that it'll go more like Malachi's labor and delivery where it'll all happen naturally and I won't have to be induced. I think that's my biggest thing. Like I really do not want to be induced. That's all in God's hands. I don't have any control over that, but I'm hoping 
that it will go smoothly. I'll start labor on my own naturally and have a natural birth. That's my plan, that's my goal. We'll see if it actually happens. Oh, and for uh, postpartum, I'm hoping that that'll go pretty well. I mean, if I end up having a C-section, I have no idea what to expect postpartum with a C-section. I've never had one. I mean, all I know for postpartum that I'm planning is a lot of baby wearing, a lot of mini napping, and a lot of adult diapers. <laughs> All right, next question. How do you keep your minimalism lifestyle going even with all the stuff needed for a baby? Well, that's been hard. First trimester was really hard for me to keep up with anything minimal because I couldn't clean or really get up much because I just felt so sick. But now as nesting is taking over, as I'm feeling better in the second trimester, uh, minimalism is gonna hit full force again. I'm about to declutter my whole kitchen again. I'll record it probably because we're gonna redo, hopefully redo the kitchen and living room floors and maybe even paint the cabinets and stuff. So to do that, I wanna re declutter all the kitchen and stuff. And that's not really what the question was, but I'm just getting excited about minimalism again is what I'm saying. And I think with a third baby, you realize that you don't really need all that much stuff they try to sell you when you have a baby. So I have a baby bouncer. I'm gonna get a little Moses bassinet and we're gonna get some outfits and stuff. We really don't need that much stuff for the baby. Oh, we definitely are gonna use our boppy pillow, but we have that already. So doing this minimalism lifestyle has helped us see that you don't need that much stuff, especially when it comes to the market of baby stuff. Cause they just, they try to sell you everything. Maybe I'll do a video at some point of like my minimalism baby essentials or something. I don't know, maybe. Next question is tips for spending time with the Lord during the newborn phase. I haven't had a newborn since like two years ago-ish, so I can't really remember how I spent time with the Lord when Malachi was very little. Um, for this baby, I do plan on still reading the Bible every morning, and I have been loving uh, books that grow my faith that are nonfiction books by really good authors, so I'm planning on instead of scrolling through my phone during nursing sessions, I want to be reading more of those books. I think more about my life and how I'm supposed to be serving and pleasing the Lord when I surround myself with positive and uplifting books and podcasts. So I'll be probably listening to more podcasts while I clean up baby stuff. That's my plan. We'll see if that actually happens or not. Um, and last question is, do you think it's a boy or a girl? I think it's a girl because of how sick I was. Um, but then again, they say every pregnancy is different. And I know people that have had two completely different pregnancies and the same gender baby. And then the complete opposite. They've had two pregnancies that seemed identical and they've had two different gender babies. So I don't know, with Arya's pregnancy, I got really sick like this pregnancy. But with Malachi, I didn't get sick at all. Like I never physically threw up. I just got a little bit nauseous. But with this pregnancy, I was throwing up all the time like Arya's pregnancy. So it's only natural for me to think that it's going to be a girl like Arya. But this baby could surprise me and come out a boy. We'll see. I'm going to not find out this time until we have the baby. So I'm excited for that surprise in February. <laughs> all right, that is all of my questions. Thank you guys for asking these questions. And I will see you next time for my first trimester recap. And then maybe next, next time for my kitchen declutter. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching this video. Keep smiling, keep finding the joy. Thanks, bye. Oh, that was so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> I collect myself. <laughs>